of fellow trade unionists describes the leadership of the National Union of Public Workers as political prostitutes. That's the top story in our Barbados Today morning news update for Thursday, June the 7th. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Opposition Senator and Trade Unionist Caswell Franklin has criticized the leadership of the National Union of Public Workers, calling them political prostitutes over the acceptance of a 4.5% pay offer from the new Mia Motley-led government, which covers a three-year period. Barbados Today understands that the union, which had been demanding a 23% hike from the last administration in a significant change of heart yesterday, agreed to a 2% hike in the first year, a 1.5% in the second, and an additional 1% increase in the third for the 2016 to 2019 negotiating period. The decision came during an hour-long meeting of the NUPW's National Council at its Dalkeith headquarters yesterday. However, reacting to the union's apparent U-turn, Franklin argued that the membership of the NUPW ought to call the executive to account while accusing the union's leadership of using the workers' plight to accomplish political ends. I see. I'm happy that the government came. But at the same time, I would not have done anything using my union or to um, help the fact that because that is not our role. And that's what they have done. Okay. It is shameful and they should, they should, um, they, they should, the members should call them to account. Because okay. if they get in bed with, with, with this government now, next time when this government becomes a bottle of gamble with somebody else, that sounds like a party too. Any ruling on a petition filed yesterday before the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights challenging this country's buggery laws is not enforceable in Barbados. A leading local attorney told Barbados today that while a ruling by the commission may be binding because this country is a signatory, it would be difficult to enforce here. The Queen's Council explained that an international body could not make Barbados honour its ruling noting though that this country would likely implement the judgment out of a need to be respected globally. Three Barbadians, a trans woman, a lesbian and a gay man, yesterday filed the petition before the Human Rights Commission challenging the island's Sexual Offences Act with particular focus on the section which criminalises burglary or anal sex between men or a man and a woman with the maximum penalty being life in prison. In sports now, it's day two of the first test match between West Indies and Sri Lanka at the Queen's Park Oval in Trinidad. A 90-run six-wicket stand between Jason Holder and Shane Dowridge ensured the West Indies emerged from day one with some credit. The regional side was 246 for six at stumps with Dowridge on 46 not out and Devandra Bishu scoreless. There's regional and international news after this short break. Back with news from the region now, a 30-year-old man in Trinidad has been charged with 18 sexual offences against three minors. Police say one of the victims allegedly assaulted by Gabriel Superville was as young as 12 years old. Superville appeared in court Tuesday and was sent to the St. Anne's Psychiatric Hospital for evaluation. He is charged with 12 counts of sexual penetration. Two counts of engaging in sexual activity in the presence of a child and two counts of causing a child to engage in a sexual act with another child. Police say the victims were 12, 13 and 14 years old when the offences allegedly occurred between September 2014 and June 2016. 
On the international scene, a man from southeast France has won the country's My Million Lottery for the second time in less than two years, a feat that mathematicians say has odds of 1 in 16 trillion. The winner, who was not named, won his first 1 million euros, the equivalent of Barbados' $2.3 million, in November 2016, and he continued to play each week. Though last month, he won his second 1 million euros. And finally, this story. Bulgaria has sentenced a pregnant cow, yes, we said, a pregnant cow, to death for wandering from Bulgaria across the European Union's external border to Siberia and lacking proper documentation upon attempted re-entry. More in this Uber News report. A two-week grazing holiday in Serbia may well cost this Bulgarian red cow its life, as officials say she must be shot for re-entering the European Union illegally. Penka's owner is outraged and has begged for his cow to be spared. The cow crossed the border <coughs> checkpoint through the barrier at Oltomansi. Neither the policemen nor the customs officers stopped her, so she entered Serbia. Went through their barrier without anyone trying to stop her. The cow, which is in her sixth month of gestation, was grazing with the rest of her herd near the village of Kopilovci, next to the Serbian border, when it crossed into the non-EU country. Despite her owner obtaining a certificate that she is in perfect health, Bulgaria's health authorities initially said they could make no exception. Penka has since made international headlines, though it is unclear whether her newfound celebrity will save her life. Well, that's news. But for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on iZoomi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.